So let me get this straight because the Wall Street Journal published an article titled iMessage and Winning detailing about how people between the ages of 18 and 24 account for 70% of iPhone owners. Then you got Google Vice President Hiroshi Lockheimer coming out and accusing iMessage of faltering bullying? Bruh, this ain't it, Chief. This is not it. Stay tuned to the video. What's up, people? This your boy, Viper, the man about tech, captain of Team Apple, baby. Back again for another video. And if you're new here, I help you better understand and connect with the technology around you. So if that's something that you're interested in, do all the YouTube things. But most importantly, I need you to go down there and hit that big subscribe button because your boy is starting on a brand new journey building this tech channel up from scratch. And when I got to drop fire like this, you want to be here. So hit the button and come on back. So we got to go a little bit deeper than I mentioned in fostering bullying. What is the brouhaha all about here? So basically for the last year or so, Google has been trying to, in the court of public opinion anyway, they've been trying to convince the people that Apple needs to incorporate support for something called RCS into iMessage. Now, to even begin this video, we gotta talk about what all these different protocols and standards mean. Basically, you have iMessage, which is what Apple uses for their iPhones. You have RCS, which is what Google is adopting. And then you have the old tried and true standard SMS, which has been around since I've been alive, which is in the 80s, Lord. I mean, definitely need to update that. So, SMS, let's start there. SMS, I think that's a short message of services. Basically, when you send a text message, it basically goes to SMS and SMS sends text messages over a cellular signal. The problem with SMS is that there's no protection, which means when you send that message, your carrier or whoever you're sending that message through can see the content of your message. Not to mention the fact that it does not support moderate messaging features like reaction, typing indicators, games, larger file size, and different things like that. It's old and antiquated. It needs to go. That I definitely agree with. The other issue is that the largest file size that you can send via SMS is 3.5 megabytes. Ooh, that is called potato in 2022. It's terrible. Now that we know what SMS is about, let's go to iMessage, the old tried and true. The thing that keeps people locked in to Apple. You know what iMessage is. You send an iMessage to your fellow iPhone owners. You get those blue bubbles. You got all types of features baked into iMessage like game, reaction, uh, chat scenes. You can send messages over the internet, over Wi-Fi with iMessage. You don't have to rely on the cellular signal as you do with SMS. So iMessage has all types of things that lock people in, not to mention FaceTime, things that people would have just come to know and love. But probably the biggest advantage that iMessage has over anything that I'm going to talk about in this video is the fact that iMessage is baked into iOS. There is no going out and downloading a third-party application when you go to the messaging app on iPhone and you send that message, you will automatically use an iMessage assuming you are messaging another iPhone owner. Now, here's where the rub comes in. If you are messaging an Android owner from an iPhone, you are then messaging them via SMS. And this is where all the flub comes in. This is where all the green bubble, blue bubble stuff comes in. Because as you know, if you send a message to an iPhone owner, they appear as a blue bubble. But if you message an Android owner, they appear as a green bubble. And this is called all types of controversy. And this is where the Google Vice President gets the whole bullying thing because Apple distinguishes between iMessages and regular other SMS messages by green bubble, blue bubble, this, that, and the other. It's whatever. That's not Apple's fault. That's just bad human beings being bad human beings. But I digress. So then we get to this last standard that Google is promoting called RCS, Rich Communication Services. Now, Rich Communication Services is not like a, a platform. It's more like a protocol. It's a standard. It's on the order of SMS, but only a much better upgraded version of SMS. So nobody really has ownership of RCS per se. It's just a standard that a lot of people have chosen to adopt. Google is a big proponent of it. With RCS, you get to message people over Wi-Fi like you do with iMessage. And RCS also incorporates typing indicators, read receipts, reactions, high quality media like video, pictures, different things like that. So it does have some similarity to iMessage and it just makes for a better texting experience for those who are texting over RCS. Now, what the Google Vice President is arguing is that if Apple were to incorporate support for RCS over iMessage, it would make for a better experience for Android users. In actuality, it wouldn't really make for a much different experience for Android users 
especially as highlighted by my man Max Weinbach in his tweet. It only makes for a better experience, apparently, for iPhone users texting Android users. That way, they can send larger file sizes, uh, have their reading indicators, uh, maybe have the reactions, different things like that. Here's the thing about the Google Vice President and his pushing RCS and Apple to adopt it. Who does this really benefit if we really think about it, right? There is a stigma, unfortunately, here in the U.S., and that's the crazy thing about this whole situation. This is largely a U.S. problem because the rest of the world uses WhatsApp as their primary messaging platform. So the rest of the world doesn't even care about iMessage. But here in the U.S., iMessage is king. And uh, Google, you know, they want to they wanna get that stigma of owning Android phones off them. So that's why they're going through this. Who doesn't benefit Apple adopting RCS into iMessage? It doesn't benefit Apple. It doesn't really benefit Android users per se. It only benefits Google the company and Android the company. Why? Because number one, it makes it easier to switch from iPhone to Android. And number two, it kind of eliminates or it could potentially eliminate the stigma of owning an Android device if the messaging situation is improved for iPhone users as they message Android users. These two things directly benefit Google and Android as a company, not Android users per se, but they directly benefit Google and Android as a company. And I don't know about you, but the, na the last time I checked, a business is not in the business of making their competitors' experiences better or making their competitor bottom line fatter. That's just not how it works. And I haven't even touched on the fact that even if Apple were to incorporate RCS into iMessage, would they really change the bubble color? Probably not. Apple will always want to distinguish between iMessage and any other messaging solution. So even if Apple were to incorporate RCS you're still gonna get the green bubble, blue bubble situation anyway. So what does this solve really in the end when we think about it? You got Google senior vice president trying to make this stuff personal. You don't make business with personal stuff. It just doesn't work like that. That's just bad business. So Apple is not going to do anything that could potentially impact their bottom line if it's not gonna make them extra money. And on the contrary, Apple adopting RTS support would probably cost them money. So why in the world would they do that? when by and large, nobody is even making a fuss that much about this. This is a tech nerd thing. This is a vocal minority situation. This is a tech nerd situation where they're crying about Apple supporting RCS. The large amount of Apple people that 70% at the, high, uh, at the Wall Street Journal highlighted don't even know what RCS is. They could care less. Yeah, they might make fun of their Android friends for having a green bubble, but at the end of the day, it's not really hindering their experience. It's not hindering their ability to communicate with their Android friends. So unless the technology greatly changes, or unless the law gets into it or the, or the regulator get into it, I don't see Apple adopting RCS anytime soon because there is no incentive there for Apple to adopt RCS. Not to mention the fact that you have to opt into RCS because again, iMessage is native to iPhone. It's automatically baked in. RCS is in Google Messages app and you have to opt into RCS before you can even use it. Not to mention the person that you're texting has to have RTS enabled on their Android device to get the full benefits of it anyway, including the one to the end-to-end -end encryption, because that's one of the other cool things about iMessage. It has end-to-end -end encryption. RTS does as well, as long as you're using Google Messages app for RTS and the person on the other end has RTS. That's the other cool thing about WhatsApp. It has end-to-end -end encryption as well as some of these other apps that I'm highlighting here on the screen. But again, RCS is something that the Android user has to do extra work to enable. It's not baked in naturally. I always say, if you have to make the customer do extra work to use your feature, you are automatically playing at a handicap. You're playing at a loss. People don't want to have to do extra work to use your feature. So Google needs to work on baking it in naturally before we can really have a serious conversation about having everybody support it. Now, I got a tweet from my man Samir here, and he wanted me to cover a few things, so I'll do that real quick. So number one, he says, should all messaging apps be compelled to support RTS or only iMessage. I don't really know if it's all about supporting RTS or iMessage. I think all messaging apps should do the best to protect their users at all costs by enabling end-to-end -end encryption. And as I just highlighted, WhatsApp does that, Facebook Messenger does that, iMessage does that, RTS does that. So as long as they have that end-to-end -end encryption enabled, I think that's the best thing that users can hope for as far as support. Then he asked, how are US operators implementing RTS? Well, as of the recording of this video, Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile all have support for RTS enabled. I think they're doing things slightly different from Google, but they do have RTS support enabled for all Android phones, so they are on board. And the final thing he asked me, how does RTS compare in privacy and security to other apps? Well, as I said, if you use Google Messages and the RTS in there, that has end-to-end -end encryption as long as the other person is using Google Messages. Now, RTS as a standalone has encryption, 
but it doesn't have end-to-end -end encryption that you find in the Google Messages app. So we're talking about RCF by itself. It does have encryption, but not end-to-end -end encryption. Other apps like iMessage, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, and the Google Messages app, they have end-to-end -end encryption, which means that the carriers or these other companies cannot see the contents of your messages. So it's better than SMS as far as security goes, but unless you use the Google Messages, you don't get that end-to-end -end encryption. So just keep that in mind. So in the description of this video, I have links to a few articles that go into more detail about this whole debate. So if you want to get educated and then make your own informed decisions, bam, hit the description, do what you got to do. If you're interested in the application that I use on my iPhone 13 Pro, bam, I just made a video about it. Check it out. This your boy Viper, the man about tech. You know where to find me. So come back for more.